We have been looking for many years for a Sunday law to be enacted in our land. And now that the movement is right upon us, we ask, will our people do their duty in the matter? Can we not assist in lifting the standard and in calling to the front those who have a regard for their religious rights and privileges? The world today is experiencing what I call modern day slavery as a result of this scandemic pandemic that has been going around for the past few months. And we want to look at some headlines in this video and also what, of course, the Bible has to say about us being free in Christ Jesus and as well as spirit of prophecy. Let us have a word of prayer. Loving Lord, our Father God in heaven, Father, hallowed be your name. Thank you for your marvelous love towards us. Thank you for your word that you have given unto us to guide us, to teach us, to help us to know your will for our lives. Bless our minds now and my lips as we open your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to the book of John chapter 1, the Gospel of John chapter 1. Gospel of John chapter 1 in verse 12. The Bible says, But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. The him there, of course, is Jesus Christ. So as many as receive the Lord Jesus Christ, God gives us the power, Christ gives us the power to become the sons and daughters of God. In other words, He gives us this power to overcome sin and to be transformed into His image. Then the Bible says, even to them that believe on His name. Keep in mind, as the Apostle Paul tells us, that we were in bondage to sin, and Christ came, clothed himself with humanity, paid the penalty for our crimes, and now we are free. And as Christ says, those that the Son of Man has made free shall be free indeed. Go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Notice in 1 Corinthians with me, chapter 7, the Bible tells us, in verse 22 for he that is called in the lord being a servant is the lord's free man likewise also he that is called being free is christ's servant we are now what free in jesus name then the bible says ye are bought with a price be not ye the servants of men ye are what now Ye are bought with a price, be not ye the servants of men. But again, as the Bible tells us, even Christ himself tells us, that Satan is the prince of this world. As long as we are in the world, in this world, similar to the children of Israel being in Egypt, we are subject to the enemy of souls to try to put us in bondage. So therefore, because of what Christ has done for us, because he has paid the penalty for my sins and your sins, what must we do then? As the Bible tells us that Satan is like a roaring lion going about seeking whom he may devour. So in other words, we must, as the Apostle Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 5, notice in Galatians chapter 5, the book of Galatians, Chapter 5, the apostle is going to tell us that we must stand. Stand. Chapter 5, and let's look at verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. The Bible says, stand fast in the liberty. What's the word there? Liberty. That means, again, we have been freed by Christ Jesus. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Do not entangle one more time with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back to Egypt. 
Don't go back to the same sin, to the same mess that would put you back to bondage to sin. Yes, brothers and sisters, Christ has freed us from sin, delivered us from sin. Remember, that's why his name was called Jesus, because he shall save his people from their sin. We already have an enemy that we cannot see who hates us, not just those who are trying to serve Jesus Christ, but every single human being on the face of, of the planet because each human being on the face of the planet reminds the enemy of Jesus Christ, of God, because as Genesis tells us that we were created in the image of God. Again, as the Bible says, that Satan is like a roaring lion going about seeking whom he made vow to put men back in bondage the same way Pharaoh would not let the children of Israel go even after God sent the ten plagues. He let them go, but he wanted to bring them back into bondage again. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. God says, a new heart will I give you. Every learner may be renewed in knowledge and in true holiness. The ransom of an enslaved race was Christ's purpose in coming to this earth. What a pity it is that human beings cannot discern their own weakness. What a pity that they enslave, they have done what now? They enslave their souls by lifting themselves up unto vanity. Christ alone can make us free. And when he makes us free, we are free indeed. His power breaks no yoke of bondage. His power breaks the yoke of bondage that binds man to the great deceiver, the originator of sin. And as I stated a moment ago, this whole pandemic, scamdemic, is about putting men in modern day slavery. We are indeed in modern day slavery. And the sad reality is that the majority are not embraced this slavery because they truly believe that the government, the power that be, even the Pope of Rome is trying to keep them safe from this pandemic virus. Notice carefully what this tells us here from the sun. Lockdowns, notice carefully, made no difference to coronavirus but destroyed millions of livelihoods. Worldwide, JP Morgan study claims. What did the lockdowns do nationwide or worldwide? It destroyed livelihoods and put people in bondage to the power that be. Notice, back to the screen. Lockdowns have not altered the course of the coronavirus pandemic but have devastated the global economy, a study by J.P. Morgan has claimed. Unlike rigorous testing of new drugs, lockdowns were administered with little consideration that they might not only cause economic devastation, but potentially more deaths than COVID-19 itself. At the same time, millions of livelihoods were being destroyed. Well, in light of what we are looking at here, millions of livelihoods are not just being destroyed, but being made to become slave. This is what's happening right now. Notice carefully the next one here. From the Metro, May 17, 2020. Pupils to stand in hoops on playground in what now? Ridiculous reopening Measures, notice, pupils will be assigned play bubbles where they will not have to stay when they go outside. Now question, does this sound like fun or does this sound like trauma and like you are a prisoner? That is the plan of the enemy, like a roaring lion going about seeking whom he may devour. Because in Noef, as the Bible says, that he has but a short time. Revelation 12, 12. Notice, a picture demonstrating how this would look 
showed hula hoops lined across the playground and marked with an X. It said toys, soft furnishings, and books had been removed from classrooms and outside playing equipment will not be able to be used as there is not enough staff to clean it afterwards. One more time. Why would you want to send your child or your children to those schools? They will come home being so traumatized. Notice carefully, it goes on to say, parents also raise concern about strict rules regarding use of the toilet. Notice, and children having to do their own first aid if they scrape themselves. The post said, children will be given specific time slots and will not be allowed to leave the classroom outside of their allocated toilet times. One more time. Is that a prison of the mind? Yes, brothers and sisters. One more time. Why are they doing this? Well, it's because we don't have a vaccine. That's what they've been pushing for. That's the reason why they are torturing those children. Set them apart. They cannot touch each other, cannot play with each other, cannot run, cannot play. They have to sit in one place. Could you imagine? Again, predictive programming, programming the next generation, programming us to accept the mark of the beast, to embrace the system, to be like robots, to not think for ourselves. That is slavery. And again, as I mentioned, the reason why some nations are doing this is because there's not a vaccine. Notice carefully. This tells us here from Newsweek, May 26, 2020. Headline, Philippines president says, no school until what now? There's a coronavirus vaccine. If no one graduates, he said, then so be it. Philippines president Rodrigo Duterte said he will not allow students to return to school in his nation until there is a vaccine for the novel coronavirus. Unless I am sure, he said, that they are quote unquote really safe. It's useless to be talking about opening of classes, he said, during a Monday evening speech, according to agents, Friends Press. For me, vaccines first. If the vaccine is already there, then it's okay, the president added. If no one graduates, then so be it. The next generation will become so dumb because of these draconian laws, because of this pandemic, fake demic, scam demic. They want a vaccine. And then again, as I said, predictive programming. They're making us think and feel that it is not safe out there to socialize anymore. It is not safe out, uh, out there. And so that the majority could cry out for the synthesis, for the vaccine. The same way they will cry out for the Sunday law. Notice this article. This tells us here from the CBC, May 25th, 2020. Here's what needs to happen before we can notice the word all get vaccinated for COVID-19. How many did they say? All get vaccinated. Again, what they are doing is conditioning the mind. They are conditioning the mind of the people. Again, they brought about fear and the majority fell for it. And now they are telling the people that we all need to be vaccinated. And brothers and sisters, I am telling you, it's going to come down to whenever they bring out their deadly vaccine and those of us who would not go along and lined up and to take that vaccine, you're going to see how people are going to snitch on us, are going to turn against us, even the authorities are going to make this a public thing and so that those people now 
could even hunt us down as they are already doing. Notice carefully. COVID-19 has appended our lives and we've all heard that there will be what now? No return to full normal until there is a vaccine for SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that has caused the pandemic. But how long will that take? What steps need to happen along the way? And where are we now? We are desperate, in other words, for a solution because we are desperately in need of the sentences so that we can get back to normal again, conditioning the mind of the people. And as I mentioned before, they've already done a very good job at this. Again, slavery of the mind. Now the people are working together with the power that be to snitch on their neighbors for not social distancing themselves. Notice carefully, coronavirus monitoring, what are the words? Bracelets flood the market ready to, notice, snitch on people who don't distance. They're going to do what now? Put a bracelet on you like you are a slave. As I said before, we are indeed looking at modern day slavery. Revelation chapter 13. This is exactly what the Bible describes here in Revelation chapter 13. Modern day slavery. Remember, the Bible says in verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. When Nebuchadnezzar commanded everybody to bow and worship that idol, that image, were there some there on the plain of Dua who were slave or who were captive from Babylon? Yes, there were many Jews there, so-called God's people in those days. But only three did not violate their conscience. Yes, physically they were in bondage, but mentally, spiritually, psychologically, they were not in bondage to Nebuchadnezzar, to Babylon. And the stand that they made back then is the stand that we should make in the last days. Let's keep reading. Verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bound, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell slavery, bondage there, no freedom of choice, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Question again. How will they do this? Well, number one, the technology that they have. But even the technologies that they have are not enough. They need the citizens. They need your neighbor as well to spy on you. Notice back to the article. Surveillance firms around the world are licking their lips at a once in a lifetime opportunity to cash in on the coronavirus by repositioning one of their most invasive products. What is that? The tracking bracelet. Body monitors are associated, notice now, with criminality and guilt in the popular imagination. The accessories of Wall Street crooks under house arrest and menace to society parallels, unlike smartphones, the facto tracking devices in their own right strapped on trackers are expressly designed to do what now? To be attached to the body and exist solely for what reason? To report the user's whereabouts and interactions to one or more third parties. One more time, modern day slavery, digitally enslaved by the power that be. Notice carefully, goes on to say, in an interview with the Intercept, Tra Balsi said, interest in Supercom's coronavirus product has been mostly government so far. 
Should any of these intrigue governments decide to use supercom bracelets to enforce quarantines? Chobalsi said it's up to them to do so responsibly. Everyone has their own rules, it goes on to say. Some countries share that they want to put everyone who comes into the country into quarantine for 14 days. Let's pause. That means they're going to put that bracelet on you. If you are visiting a country, you have to have that bracelet on you and then be in quarantine for 14 days. The reason for having the bracelet is because they want to make sure that you stay put. It goes on to say, some want to put it on to people who are sick or who have a confirmed case. It depends what that government's regulations are. Notice, they define the rules exactly as they want. We just do what now? Provide them with technology for what reason? To track people. Again, modern day slavery. This is where we are. In the system we have been reading about from prophecies, Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 and 17 is right upon us. When we see all these things begin to come to pass, we must lift our heads towards heaven because our redemption indeed draweth nigh. Speaking of tracking, speaking of snitches, notice carefully what this tells us here. Toledo, 911 lines flooded with people doing what? Reporting others for doing what? For not social distancing. Police in Toledo, Ohio, were forced to give people a different number to report citizens who were not social distancing. After 9-11 lines were flooded with calls, the department had to clarify that the advice was given. Why? Because too many people were calling 911 to try to report others. We are posting this because people are tying up the 911 lines to report others who are not socially distancing. That was a record. 911 had to stop taking phone calls. Do you get it? Because the line was too busy. Not enough people to answer those phone calls. And what were those phone calls about again? Calling on the Gestapos. Calling on your neighbors. Calling for the, the Gestapos to come and check on your neighbors. That's a fearful and brainwash and in bondage the people are right now. Do you see a mark of the beast? Do you see how the people are going to go after the commandment keeping people of God? They've already been trained, been brainwashed, been desensitized to do so. Predictive programming. Notice carefully, goes on to say, our goal is to provide the appropriate number for people to call instead of them calling 911. Notice the next one here. From the Chicago Tribune, May 13th, 2020. The social distancing police, notice now, aware, among us, would you call out a neighbor for what? For unsafe practices or call 911? Well, we just read how they've been calling 911 and the line, 911 line, was jam packed to the point where they had to stop taking phone calls. Would you do something like that? Well, you need to be careful. This is the reason why we were told we need to leave the cities and go into a country area where your neighbors are not too close to you. Amen? Where they are not too close to you to spy on you. They have all those technologies out there. But it is still not enough. They have to have some foot soldiers. And those foot soldiers, those CIAs, are not folks who have been trained, but they are your neighbors. Well, in a way, they have been trained by the power that be to spy on you. Notice the next one here. This tells us here from the slate. Six feet people, if there are kids outside, notice, 
getting more than adequate exercise time and basically goofing around a concern. Notice now, next door user in Cherry Hill Village, Michigan, ask in a recent post on the hyperlocal social network, is there something that can be done? What is the context here? Kids playing outside for too long and the neighbor wants to call the authority by using this app that they call Nextdoor. That's the name of the app that we are going to look at in a moment. The name of the app is Nextdoor. That means your next door neighbor. Keep an eye. Brothers and sisters, do you see that we are reliving the Hitler era again? Notice next one here. From the Cincinnati ABC 9, before you violate social distancing rules, beware. Beware of what? Your neighbor is doing what? Is watching. Cincinnati police report a growing number of calls over social distancing violations while neighbors are taking to shaming each other on social media. The frequent arguments on the next door social networking service revealed a sharp divide between what some think is an innocent outdoor activity and others believe is dangerous to the spread of the what now? Of the COVID-19 virus. That's how, one more time, the people are so fearful and brainwashed. Now they are not afraid to call the authorities on their neighbors. Just like the Bible says, in the last days, they will betray one another. Watch this clip here. To groups of people standing outside an ice cream parlor, or maybe they're playing pickup basketball or sharing a sidewalk on a nice day. Weeks ago, these were everyday activities, but the coronavirus has changed everything. Investigative reporter Paula Christian takes a look at how social distancing complaints are drawing shame on social media and calls to the police. It's too dangerous. Donna Kinney is worried about the spread of the coronavirus in her Hyde Park neighborhood. At age 75, she's a cancer survivor who is careful to protect her health. So she is not afraid to speak up when she sees others who may be violating social distancing rules. We can't get things better if we don't speak up. Kinney was one of hundreds who posted comments on the Nextdoor social media site about customers gathered in front of Grater's Ice Cream in Hyde Park. They were congregating outside like it was the middle of summer. Then they went over into the park and sat like it was a normal day. Grater's is considered an essential business and is allowed to stay open. Kinney called Grater's headquarters to complain. She didn't call Cincinnati police, but plenty of others have. Cincinnati police have seen crowd complaints double from February to March, and April's complaints are on target to double that number again. So far in Hamilton County, law enforcement have issued 61 citations. In Norwood, Police Lieutenant Ron Ron Murphy has gotten complaints about big family parties, basketball games, and a church that wasn't practicing social distancing. Tri-state residents still post daily complaints on social media about everything from coughing joggers to landscapers with leaf blowers. Donna Kinney doesn't see those complaints ending anytime soon. But if I see something that I don't think is right, especially now, I'm going to challenge it. Mm -mm -mm, brothers and sisters, get ready and think about this. This is not going to just happen in a neighborhood far away or close to you, but also folks within the church, your own church, will do so. They will do so because they believe that the authorities are trying to keep them safe. Notice carefully the next one here. This is from the activist post. Next door helps spread neighborhood, what's the word, snitching by showering, notice now, law enforcement with what? With gifts. They have done what? Showering law enforcement with gifts. 
Oh, brothers and sisters, notice carefully. Community platform next door is going to great lengths to become the go-to app to snitch on your neighbors. According to a City Lab article, next door is showering law enforcement with all expenses paid vacations to their headquarters in San Francisco, California, all in an effort to gain law enforcement acceptance and put police on public agency advisory councils. In which country is this taking place? The United States of America. Which nation, we were told again, will put the world under bondage, slavery? The United States of America. Watch this carefully. Tonight, several local law enforcement agencies are joining forces asking for your help in preventing crimes and trying to solve those crimes. They say all you need to do is download an app. 13 News Now reporter Nico Clemens explains what Nextdoor is and how it can help police help you. Local law enforcement are searching for a few more eyes and ears on the streets, and they say you can help. The Newport News Police Department, Hampton Police Division, and York Pocosin Sheriff's Office are all having success using the Nextdoor app. They're now encouraging you at home to join. And we can sort by what kind of crime, when it happened. It's a private social network for neighborhoods. The app allows you to communicate with your neighbors and find out what's going on next door. Yeah, this is one that's becoming really popular. Did I just hear gunshots? Christy Dealey lives in the Minchville section of Newport News. She started using the app about four years ago. And Newport News is very active on Nextdoor. They post all the time. Dealey says police keep them in informed about so much, whether it's about recent crimes or just sharing safety tips. She says that the app also helped recently during a couple break-ins. People are able to start working together, people asking, hey, I saw that vehicle or I saw those people. Since November 2014, the number of people using Nextdoor in Newport News, Hampton and York Pocosin has grown by nearly 700 percent. And there's stories from across the country of increasing neighborhood watch participation. Almost 40,000 people use Nextdoor among the three jurisdictions. And a good chunk of them say they feel more informed since Newport News, Hampton, and York Pocosin started using the app to communicate with the community. Or they may say, hey folks, listen, we're seeing an increase in this crime in your neighborhood. You know, we're doing these three things, but we really need you to lock your doors. Many like Dealey are happy to provide a few extra eyes and ears because at the end of the day, they're making their neighborhood a better place to live. And you notice what they said, to make the neighborhood a safe place. To make the neighborhood a safe place. You have everybody keeping an eye on you. It sounds pretty good, right? It sounds pretty good. And keep in mind, we are told that is the deception Satan will use to enforce the mark of the beast. Those who would not bow to the image and receive the mark, Satan will tell the people that they are violating the laws of the land. It is because of them, those calamities are falling upon the earth. If we get rid of them, then everything will get back to normal. But as we know right now, there's no such thing as normal. Notice carefully the next one here. From City Lab, May 21st, 2020. How? Next door, that's the app there, the company there, courts, police, and public officials. Notice, forward to police. As coronavirus creeps through communities, real fears, real what now? Real fears are not in short supply. And as the radius of public life for many people shrinks down to their zip codes, Next door has become a lifeline. Next door has risen to meet the coronavirus crisis with new features and rules to stop people from using stigmatizing, notice now, or stereotypical language when talking about the pandemic. The company rolled out what now? A new speech policy. Do you see what's happening here? So if I say this whole coronavirus was a scandemic, a fake-demic, a shame-demic, a pandemic, then I am an evil person, according to them. Then they need to report me to the police. Notice carefully. To limit misinformation, searching for coronavirus-related terms, 
prompts a pop-up with a CDC and WHO source tip sheet snitching on your neighbor. And who is the power, one more time, who gave us this shame-demic, plandemic, scam-demic? It is none other than the Pope of Rome. Jesus said that he has freed us from the bondage of Satan. Go to 2 Thessalonians with me. We are seeing the signs that must be fulfilled prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. And notice what 2 Thessalonians tells us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. One more time. Which power gave us this uh, coronavirus pandemic? It is none other than the Pope of Rome. The Bible tells us, who is this man of sin? The Bible says, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. Who is he? The son of perdition, who opposeth, and what else? Exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. It is that same power under the leadership of Satan that is putting the world in bondage again. Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall do what? Destroy or consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his comings. I've covered this before. Destroy with the spirit of his mouth. This is the proclamation of the third and fourth angel's message. Then the Lord will come physically and destroy this man of sin. And then the Bible says, even him, verse 9, whose coming is after the coming or working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That power who gave us COVID-19 pandemic works for Satan and now is telling the world that they need to worship false gods, false gods, just like the children of Israel, some of them, said, let us go back to Egypt or let us make ourselves idols because that was the God that delivered us out of Egypt. Same thing that's happening today. Notice the deception there. This tells us here, Pope to lead world shrines in rosary prayer for what? For pandemic May 30th, Pope Francis will lead the major shrines around the world in praying the rosary to implore who? Mary's intercession and protection in the coronavirus pandemic. At the feet of Mary, he said, the quote unquote Holy Father will place the many troubles and sorrows of humanity further worsened by the spread of COVID-19. Yes, he gave us the coronavirus. Now he's leading the whole world to worship Satan, which he called Mary. To worship Satan, brothers and sisters. And that is exactly what we just read here. It says again that this wicked must be revealed. This wicked man, the man of sin, must be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, the proclamation of the third, the fourth angel's message, and even second angel's message, Revelation 14, verse 8, to expose this power that is putting the world into bondage to worship Satan. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. There is one pointed out in the prophecy as the man of sin. He is who? The representative of Satan. Then she says, the popes have exalted themselves above the God of heaven. This is the reason that in prophecy, the papal power is 
specified as the man of sin. Satan is the originator of sin, the power that he causes to alter any one of God's holy precepts is the what now? Men of sin. Under Satan's special direction, the papal power has done this very work. Hence, the reason why we read in Ephesians. Go to the book of Ephesians with me, chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 10. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And notice now, and have no fellowship with whom? With the unfruitful works of darkness. But what must we do? But rather, do what now? We prove them. We must do what? We prove them. That means expose them as we read a moment ago in 2 Thessalonians. That is exactly what the Apostle Paul said. He shall be revealed or exposed. We must expose this man of sin who is again causing the world as Nebuchadnezzar did to worship false God. We must exalt the God of heaven because we are told this is one of the signs that we should be looking for and then once we see this and we must proclaim the message that will usher in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Then notice, the Bible gives us this encouragement in verse 16. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort, what now? Your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We have to be established. Thank God for his promises. Thank God for the hope that he gives us. Thank God for the courage that he is giving us in the last days, in spite of the fear, in spite of all of those things, that we can still, with boldness and with love for others, preach the undiluted gospel of Jesus Christ to those that are dying in their ignorance. Let's pray. Loving Father which art in heaven, we want to thank you for entrusting us with your word and to present it to the world and to save them from the bondage of sin. Lord, we pray that you continue to do this work that you have begun in us until that perfect day. In the meanwhile, help us to be overcomers. Help us to face whatever it is that you want us to face with boldness, with cheerfulness, and as we keep our eyes focused on the Lamb. And as we are bound for the heavenly kingdom, remind us always that we need to reach out to someone in this world to also introduce them to our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.